Greetings from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Monday, April 13, 2020. We start out with the hope and wishes that you are staying safe, staying healthy, staying home. Snake Mountain Boat Works is closed, but since the shop is at home for me, uh, I've continued working alone. And I focused that effort on the 1956 19-foot Chris Craft Capri's bottom. I'm right up to the point where once I've applied four coats of clear penetrating epoxy sealer to the chines and the bottom plank of the transom, I'll be ready to begin priming and painting the bottom. But I thought, based on the flood of emails and calls I've been receiving, uh, that tell me that many of you are trying to fill your empty hours by trying your hand at restoring your ancient Woody. Congratulations, keep at it. Save her. She deserves it and so do you. So I thought what I might be interesting for you is to shoot a single video that kind of walks you through the steps that we take to start with a boat that's flipped upside down, still has bottom paint on it, and go from there through the steps that we go through to uh, finally have that beautiful copper bronze hard racing enamel gleaming back at us as if the whole bottom were very similar to a shiny new penny. So we started out with this boat with a heavy, heavy series of coats of bottom paint. We went at it with the stripper we're trying now since circa 1850 has been banned and there are no good strippers on the market. I promise you there are no good strippers on the market. This is not a good stripper. But it's the least awful among the terrible ones that are now available to us. This is Jamestown Distributors Total Boat Total Strip Paint Remover. The Plus, oh it has a very sweet odor what odor it has. Has almost none. Has absolutely no effect on your skin. Uh, and unfortunately, unless you're really patient, has very little effect on the materials you're trying to remove from the surface. Uh, we ran a, a, a workshop where we tested, I believe, nine different strippers that are still on the market. Only two actually did anything in the two hours of the uh, workshop. The total boat appeared to be pretty good at taking off topside paint and varnish. Pretty good. Uh, nothing like Circa 1850 was. Uh, Aqua Strip, which was the other top finisher, was pretty good at, at removing bottom paint and topside paint. Uh, our lab rat was a 1947 Chris U22, the Spanish cedar hulled uh, version of it. So we tested the white paint, the bottom paint, and some of the varnish. Uh, the aqua strip and the total boat stripper were the only ones that uh, I would even consider buying, and I have to say I'm searching. Um, the problem with this stuff is it leaves a gooey mess, and with Circa 1850, we were able to scrape and clean the surface, no more. But still, uh, what, I've, what I've learned by trial, pure trial and error is that don't put on a heavy, heavy, heavy coat, even though the direction suggests that you put it on heavily. Don't do it. Uh, it's a fool's errand. What you want to do is lay it on, 
kind of like you're putting a coat of paint on, about that thick, just about like that. Uh, it, it will not curtain, it really stays on fairly vertical surfaces, and it also stays wet for quite a while. Um, but it doesn't do much, and the problem is, it leaves this gooey mess. You can get some of it off with your scrapers, but then you reach for your stainless steel scrub pad, and what it does is just fills everything up, and I've gone through eight of these things to strip this hull this far. Um, the other tools that we will use in the stripping phase, uh, this is an inexpensive, I won't say cheap, Right. It is all way tool company. It's just a good old fashioned hardware store, four bladed paint scraper. But the, the advantage it has is that the blade's edge is slightly convex, which means that when you're when you're stripping the forward part of a hull where the flare is, a scraper like this with very tough corners tends to leave two racing stripes, two gouges in the mahogany. That's not good. This inexpensive stripper, which I can't remember, I think I bought these on Amazon. Uh, I bought a two inch one and I think this is an inch and a half. They proved to be really good uh, in the forward part of the hull. As always, I had several reefing hooks available, and I use these for cleaning out seams, particularly when idiots have put uh, 3M5200 in here, and it's, of course, failed everywhere, and you've got to get it out. What I do, and I don't know if you can see this, but I think we've got six or eight of these things. This one on your left on the screen is the full width as it comes. The middle one we have ground down to be almost a knife edge. The one on your right we have ground to the point of being about halfway in between the other two. These things are really great. You can clean out this channel in here, which is always filled with God knows what. So the first step is to get it stripped, get it clean. And what I found, um, I bought a bunch of these a long time ago and then discovered with circa 1850 you don't need them. But these are circa 1850 stripping pads. These work really well after you've scraped as much off as you can and you've destroyed a couple of these guys. Uh, these, these stripping pads are really good. So that's the stripping phase. At that point, and particularly if you are doing some body work on the bottom. In this case, we've completely refastened the entire bottom. It's been completely refastened, um, which meant that we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of countersink holes. Our go-to product for filling those countersinks is 3M Marine Premium Filler. Again, in fact, all that I'm going to show you, uh, say for the caulking gun and the and the Festool stuff uh, is available from Jamestown Distributors. This is just great. I use a very flexible wide blade putty knife. I think this is almost two inches wide, say an inch and three quarters. Uh, Anthony and Joe prefer a uh, plastic body pad and we, we use sacrificial pieces of waste plywood. Once we have the countersinks all filled, and it will take at least two coats, so you apply the first coat on, sand everything, you'll still have concavities, go back and do it again, and then 
Uh, this morning, in fact, along the uh, Port Chine, I discovered that a series of these had sunk over the almost five days that this has been sitting here. So I went back and did uh, another pass. And then comes the challenge of these open seams in the bottom. This is where, for years, people used 3M5200. Uh, I'll have to admit, we, had, we did it as well in the beginning, until we, the first boat we ever did came back for some new varnish. And John, at that point, looked underneath it and he said, my God, what are all those curtains? And what had happened, of course, is that the bottom planks expanded and pushed the 5200 out. So we, we had quite an interesting bottom. That was the last time we used that. Um, for years after that, we used Interlex Seam Compound, which truly is an excellent product. But the problem with it is you can't pay it. You can't sort of feed it in and then take a putty knife and draw it out. You have to work crosswise. You have to, it's kind of, kind of like making bread. You've got to knead it into the seams. Well, that sucks. And it would take hours and hours and hours to just do a few feet. So uh, rather than continue spending owner clients money needlessly, we kept searching. And I was talking to the guys at Jamestown one day and the suggestion was made, why don't you try a new product we have? And the new product that Total Boat had brought out was Thixoflex Flexible Epoxy Adhesive. So it's a pretender to 5200. Uh, it doesn't have the same adhesion that 5200 uh, delivers, so you wouldn't want to use it in a bottom. And besides, since it's almost twice as expensive as white 5200, which we use when we uh, are building a true 5200 bottom, uh, there's not much advantage. But for filling these seams, it is just wonderful. Um, we'll use our Makita piston 18 volt caulking gun. Uh, why do we do that? Well, I'm pretty strong. And in particular, my hands are pretty strong. So we started testing this the first day. John on one side of a boat bottom and me on the other doing seams. And uh, after about 10 minutes, both of us, because John also had incredibly strong hands and forearms. After about 10 minutes, it was time for a break. We were beat. So we tried one of our pneumatic caulking guns that use air to dispense the material. Well, the problem is the this mixing tube mixes the, the two parts of the uh, eventual epoxy product. One of them's a lot thinner than the other one. What we discovered was an air-driven caulking gun blew out all of the lighter stuff and left everything else in there and of course nothing nothing cured. So uh, we now have several of these 18 volt Makita uh, piston caulking guns. There are also piston uh, pneumatic caulking guns. They're frightfully expensive and of course you fight that hose all the time as you're dragging across the bottom. Uh, these things are really great. Uh, we have uh, a couple of videos up showing me applying this. Uh, in order to do these seams, I went, I went through everything here twice. So as I went through a first time, paid the Flex, drew it out with a putty knife and the nice thing is then you can go back on the outside of the seam and you pick up a tremendous amount of uh, effectively waste product 
But what I did with that was to simply pay it ahead by hand and draw it out. So I, I, we waste none of it. Um, why are there vice grips here? Well, I used to raise sheep and I learned early on that vice grips and a pipe wrench are the farmer's two principal two hand tools. Uh, this mixing tip cures. And once it cures, uh, getting, getting that tip off by hand is next to impossible, hence the vice grips. So now we have the bottom fared, the seams filled, and the next step is to sand everything. On the bottom, we sand with 60, and then go over it quickly with 80. We're not really trying to produce a surface that uh, will be varnished. But even on top sides and transoms and decks, we never go finer than 80 anyway before we begin going with the varnish. Next, now we've got her all sanded. She's fared, seams are filled, everything's cured. It's time to seal her. Our strong, strong, strong recommendation is do not be tempted by the pretenders to Smith's clear penetrating epoxy sealer. They're just not the same product. Uh, the ones sold under a total boat label uh, doesn't penetrate in our tests, takes forever to seal and leaves kind of a globby mess behind it. Uh, we dispense it because we buy it in two gallon kits and we dispense it with the largest West system pumps. It's just perfect. Uh, this stuff mixes one to one. So now we've got everything sealed and it's time to begin the priming and painting of the bottom. I know Scotch blue tape Painter's tape is the go-to product for many, many, many people. It was here too until one day I was in a, a local hardware store and the manager turned to me and said, you ever try this stuff? I wonder if it's any good. I said, well, it has to be. It's almost twice as expensive. She said, why don't you take a roll, give it a shot, let me know. Well, frog tape now is our only tape. If we want to mask off a razor edge, it, we use frog tape. And as you can see on the port side of this boat, where I've masked off the bootstripe in preparation for priming and painting the bottom, uh, we use the first three inches are masked solely with frog tape. But it's not just lay it on. I kind of ch had to chuckle this morning uh, when I was watching the depressing news and an ad came on for frog tape. And the ad showed the person grabbing, grabbing a piece of tape and just doing this grabbing a piece of tape, laying it on, going by once, and then painting, and then time-lapse photography, they bring this off and you've got a knife edge. Well, let me tell you, friends, there was a whole lot of activity between that wipe the tape, tape on and paint that knife edge. We've discovered that what you want to do is to heat this adhesive ever so slightly and then really work it and I quite honestly use a linoleum roller it works really well and I believe it or not also use my Makita 
Uh, excuse me. Oh, DeWalt would hate that. My DeWalt heat gun, I set it at about 350 degrees, and I just warm the tape up to the touch. You don't want to get it boiling, boiling and bubbling. And then roll it. Overkill? Maybe. But I want to tell you, we get knife edge results, which is what we're after. So now we have her stripped, sealed, sanded, seams filled, Everything's ready to go, and for a Carvel planked bottom, not a lat strike bottom, uh, using 2000 E on a lat strike bottom is to waste money. Uh, 2000 E is a two part barrier coat primer. It essentially, uh, if you want to think about it, think of a, a thatched roof. That's the kind of result you get in the film of this paint once it's cured. Uh, the Interlux Interprotect 2000E must be applied in five coats, not heavy coats. You want to finally achieve about a 10 mil film thickness and what we do is we buy both gray and white and alternate between coats. In this case the first coat is going to be gray, the next coat will be white. Why do that? It's so easy to find holidays because the gray will show right through. You know to go back and pick up those holidays the third coat will be gray again. Holidays will just burst through in white. It's so easy. Um, you do not sand between coats of this stuff. Uh, I can't remember. The dwell time is about 20 minutes. And I think we want to recoat at kind of reasonable temperatures within 13 hours or something of that sort. Um, and then finally, the really fun part. Three coats of Pettit Old Salem hard racing copper bronze bottom paint. And when you finish, you have a, a bright penny. So that's what I'm going to be doing. The next step is to apply the clear penetrating epoxy sealer to the chimes and across the bottom of the transom. We'll do that now and remember when you're applying CPES the first two coats are applied immediately one after the other. Don't let the first one cure. Give that combination of two coats a good 24 hours if your shop is at least 60, 65 degrees. Apply a third coat and then again it may be overkill but we wait and go one more day and apply a fourth coat. And this is particularly below the water line. This wood's going to sit in water. Let's face it, it's going to stay wet. Lots of us claim that, oh, we're going to dry sail our boats. We're not going to just leave them in water day after day after day. But of course we do. And the extra coat of clear penetrating epoxy sealer to me, uh, well, it takes a little time and eats up uh, quite a bit of material. It's really inexpensive insurance. So that's our update on April 13, 2020, on the 1956, 19-foot, Chris Craft Capri. Thank you so much. Please stay safe. Bye-bye for now from Snake Mountain Boatworks.